ways to subtract 6.10. We've learned several ways to subtract. And we can use tens and ones models. We've used those. We can use a hundred board or chart. We can use mental math and think of it in our head and come up with an answer. We can use pencil and paper to write the equation. Sometimes one way is easier than another. Here we have 35 minus 8. We could either use pencil and paper or we could use the tens and ones models for this one. The 8 is larger than the 5, so we need to regroup. We need to take 8 away. And we can take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we can take some away from this 10, 6, 7, 8. That's going to leave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 ones and two tens. We have seven ones here, see? So using models was helpful for that one. For this one, because we're taking away an even amount of tens, just three tens, no ones, we can use a hundred chart. We start at the 83 and we hop back three rows because each row is 10. 73, 63, 53. And the answer is 53. Now let's look at each one of these problems. We need to circle one of the ways to solve it and then solve it using that way. We have 52 minus 20. Well, we're taking away two tens. So maybe it would be easy to do mental math and just take the two tens away from the five tens or to use a hundred chart. We can use a hundred chart. That'll be our choice for this one. We can start at 52 and each row is 10, so we can hop back two rows, 42, 32. Our answer is 32. Take a look at this one. We have 44 minus 18. Well, this would be a little hard to do mental math, so let's get rid of that one. A hundred chart won't work because we're not taking away an even amount of tens. See, we have one ten and eight ones, so that would be hard to use a hundred chart. We could use it if we started with the number and then counted back squares, but we wouldn't be able to hop rows, okay? We could use a pencil and paper, or we could use tens and ones models. So let's use tens and ones models. We have 44 minus 18. Here we have 44, and we need to take 18 away. We break this one up, this 10 up, as some ones. And now we can take 18 away. We take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we have to take away 110. And that leaves us with two tens and six ones. It's 26. Look at this one. We have 61 minus 5. We might be able to do mental math. A hundred chart won't work unless we counted back each square five times. Well, then it might work. We're only taking away five, so tens and ones models, it might work, but let's just do the pencil and paper one. We'll just do this with the pen. We have 61 minus five. The five is bigger than the one, so we regroup the six as a five. The one becomes an 11. Now we have 11 minus five, which is six. We drop down the five, we have 56. See? Let's try some problem solving. Does the answer make sense? We need to circle yes or no and then explain our choice. Emma found 41 shells on the beach. She kept nine. How many shells did she leave on the beach? It says 50 shells. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Think about this. She found 41 shells on the beach. She kept nine. Could she have left 50 on the beach? Well, no. If you said no, you're right, because that doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make sense because she can't leave 50 if she only found 41. 50 is greater than 41. If she found 41 and she kept 9 of them, we regroup the 4 as a 3 and the 1 becomes an 11. 11 take away 9 is 2. We drop the 3 down. It's 32 left on the beach. So 50 doesn't make sense. She only found 41, right? Okay. We're getting closer and closer to the end of Chapter 6. We're going to continue on. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how addition and subtraction are opposites and how we can use subtraction and addition with each other. And we're going to use addition to check our subtraction problems. Okay? I'll see you there. Bye.